um, and uh, good morning. And I know this is everybody's favorite um, moment when you can hear a lawyer. Um, few um, comments on the just what we heard. Um, is maybe that um, when we talk about the law, we talk about the rules, and at the end of the day, I mean, what is defense at what cost? Who's going to be protected and against what? And really, really, this is not about the AI, but of course, that's like uh, one of the trends. And there's a lot of uh, talking in the legal community that do we need new regulation? If you want to hear my personal opinion, absolutely not. We have like so much regulation that... Um, and every time we get a new phenomenon, people think that there needs to be like that phenomenon needs to be regulated. And I'm kind of that we still haven't learned that at the end of the day, it's about the impacts. Um, so the tool isn't really that important when you are trying to find out the impacts. For example, if we think a really stupid example, and I'm, by the way, already disclaimer, I'm very famous from limping analogies and provocative examples. If you think about the kitchen knife, it's totally okay to slice your cucumbers, but if you start chopping your annoying neighbor, that's another thing. So it's not about the knife as well, it's what you do with it. And for the AI, it's my kind of a question is that, why would it be suddenly acceptable that I can discriminate people just because it's used with this brand new fancy technology. But going more into the agenda of the day, uh, also about this jungle, I'm not really agreeing. And of course, somebody can say it's easy for you to say, because I mean, I've been in that jungle for too long time. So of course, I see paths where some people don't see any, but I would say that they are rather clear paths. And all you, you don't need to be specialist, but it's good to understand that why you should ask uh, some things when you do not know. So um, here's the map, a very bad map, but at least it shows you where like major data regulation going on. So there are a lot. And they are not like brand new. I'm personally a bit frustrated as an older person that people are kind of, ah, now we have this general data protection regulation. Uh, we did have the directive since 95 with exactly the same principles, but there wasn't really enforcement in Europe. So it was kind of that you have kids playing in the ground and somebody say, don't climb into that tree, it's dangerous. But I mean, kids just keep on climbing because there's nobody pulling them down. So the whole thing about the GDPR was to have a bit more stick here and maybe a bit more carrot uh, there and then there was a big that oh everything is gonna change and I can't do anything anymore and uh, lawyers are going to tell me no. Uh, I would say already here that I have not yet seen a business model that would be totally impossible. I have a vivid imagination so I can think of you but it's more how you do them and there's a big difference. So uh, I call JD by kind of a silent revolution because it kind of sets a certain standard. And going back to this technology neutrality, it's totally up to you how you achieve that standard. GDPR doesn't tell you how to do things. And this has been kind of a source of frustration. And it's kind of ironic because for years, for example, the European Commission was criticized that don't tell me how to do things because I know my own field. Tell me what to do, and I will figure out how to do it. And the GDP is kind of exactly that. It's not a manual for the companies how to do things. It's a declaration of human fundamental rights. And from that point of view, I think it's brutally clear. Um, and now people are complaining that give me guidance, give me advice. And they're kind of in the commission that for years you were ranting about this, and now you're telling that you want guidance. Well, we will have those. Where are the big fines dragging along? Because uh, the fine under uh, data breach is not the traffic ticket. So it's not going to slam it on your windshield. So there's a lot of investigation because you can understand that if you start investigating something like Google and Apple or Facebook, uh, the first thing they're going to say that I need more time to reply to this. And for the investigators, if they would say that, no, I'm not going to give you any, then you're already digging uh, your grave because later on they will say, I wasn't even given time to reply. So unfortunately, these cases keep dragging on. Good news for the game companies is that they smartly started from the big fish. So the authorities and investigation didn't go directly to the small 
uh, operators because they do understand how dependent the game industry is on the platforms, third-party service providers, hosting companies, and social media. I'm going to come to that later on. So, um, it's the attitude I've seen. Um, because the companies are so involved, and the game companies, I mean, you have so many worries there. I mean, you need to launch that game now in time, you're running out of money, it needs to be functional, you need to localize it. And uh, so it's kind of a side, so think about what you are doing with the da uh, personal data. But uh, I can tell you that the price for non compliance is high. Of course, I'm an idealist and optimist. I think it's the right thing to do, because I decide what is done with my personal information, not some company. And it's not even the game companies, it's your third party service providers. And for example, if I think about my mother that I'm cruelly always kind of using her as a bad example, she's not that bad with technology. But I think that she would not even understand hearing some of the names like uh, for example, the data brokers like DoubleClick or AdMobi. I mean, she thinks that she's reading like Helsingin Sanomat, and she has no clue that there's somebody else behind collecting uh, your data and transferring it no, who knows where. So, why I'm showing you this is that you can all see why I never became a graphic designer. Sorry for the bad quality, it's kind of for purpose. But when I go to the, like any company and I ask them that how do your data flows look like, they actually have an illusion that it's something like this. That I have my game and then I have these few uh, services and this is the way the data flows. I mean simple. Uh, in real world, however, even if you have a relatively simple setup, for example, just on your web page, what by the way is very often neglected because that's not your service. Your game is something else and you have website more kind of a window for the department store, that's what's going on. And I can tell you there have been some nasty things there because nobody gives a thought for that. But anyway, it looks something like this. And this is a totally different uh, thing to understand because you would be you are under obligation to explain to your end user if somebody asks that what's happening. And you're gonna, huh. And uh, my acid test question is that if somebody sends you a request that delete my data, I'm not going into whether you actually need to do it, but let's imagine that they have the right. Can you do that? Because if you can, you are in pretty good shape because you know what you have and where it is. And I can guarantee that still many very large corporations, because they're facing this uh, multiplied with 50, don't really know for sure that when they have pushed that delete button, that your personal data is actually gone from every single corner of that ecosystem. A uh, few things that, now I'm going back when the GDPR came and we had a, like a game company task force. I was then working for Rovio and we understood that we are all facing the exactly same questions. So we decided that why do we all need to hit our head to that brick wall, let's come together. I mean, we can't talk business we have fairly similar underlying systems. I mean, the user interface is really different, but underlying technology isn't that drastically different. So let's gather in the one room and discuss. And these were like the first findings that we found out. Of course, the design. If you haven't designed your game from the perspective that you know what data you're collecting and why, and for example, this delete, so it becomes kind of impossible to comply. I, Another really horrible example, and sorry for any German speakers, but I use like a East German tax office as a bad example, that if we have that kind of old bureaucratic building from let's say 50s, and now I would need to change it into functioning kindergarten, you can understand how much work there would be. I mean, it was just not built for that kind of purposes. It has like steep stairs and it's really like full of little rooms and high rise. So if I would be building the kindergarten, I would have a totally different approach I would actually design that product. So, yes, the whole life cycle. First time you still need a hardware, even though somebody takes any kind of device, downloads your game, what is actually happening? Do I know what's coming in, what's going out? As long as they're playing, what if they decide to leave? Can I then ensure that all my like hosting partners and whomever 
that they are also aware that when Lena says that goodbye and I want my data deleted, that can be done. And from here to eternity. I, a lawyer, I do love words, but I've learned to love pictures, architect pictures like I showed, because it's much easier to discuss internally with your like different people that are working, designers and coders, lawyers, when you are tapping the finger and asking what's happening here. Instead of that, you have to read like 15-page document where some way it's hidden that you understand, ah, there's an interface there. This is actually going to uh, Belarusia. Is that a good thing? Uh, maybe under current political uh, environment, not really the best place to have your servers. But then still the headache are the third parties. Uh, and I would say, like I already said, I'm only making business with the gang that respects my requirements. But it's very often, as you know, it's a take it or leave it. Here's my service and I can't change it for you. And there isn't really alternatives. The good news is that yes, they're starting to be. For example, taking now, uh, excuse me, I need to take a concrete example. There are other baddies there, Google Analytics. Really nice tool. Free of charge. Unfortunately, it's like a greedy child in the candy store. It slurps everything that is on your service and, and uh, in, transfers to the USA. So now it's, uh, I've always been thinking that that doesn't fly. Uh, and this rare moment let me brag a little, yes, I told you so. And now, of course, we have a several formal decisions by the authorities that it's not compliant. I hope sincerely that Google will change it because that would serve us all. Why don't you make me a tool that is compliant? Uh, and uh, waiting for that, just saying that yes, there are alternatives. There are free of charge analytics available that are already like stamped as a compliant. If you go to the Data Protection Authority websites, do. They are much more user-friendly than you could imagine. Even the EU sites where nobody goes, where there's a lot of free information available, are quite nice. So you can see there are like white lists, listed technologies available for you. Then what I've learned to hate is this free of charge. Not talking about open source software here, but any like code that is hanging around in the internet, what is of course kind of a gift from heaven when you're in the tight budget. And the problem with this is that it's not that such uh, from de a demon, but uh, very often I've seen that if there are any processes to check, for example, data security or, or data protection on any kind of processes, they are tied to money, even in small companies. If I want a new coffee cup, I need to say to my boss that is it okay that I will order a new coffee cup? And then they will say what kind of and how much did it cost and maybe that it will actually hold the coffee. But if you don't have money, everything will fly under radar. And that's a problem that it comes as a surprise because you would say, hey, this is super handy technology. I will just take it. it by the way, it doesn't cost anything. Um, even for the money, I've sometimes been scrolling around because I had an unhappy role of actually reviewing all the free of charge licenses and URLs. You are scrolling down and then it says for non-commercial use only. So now you're busted if you want to launch your game and you have included because now the price is something else uh, when it's actually used for commercial activities. But other than that, it may be that those people didn't give any thought and there's no liability or whatsoever because it's free. And even though it may be okay, but you need to ensure that it's okay. So pay attention for that, that if people use this free of charge, that they are subject to same process than if money was involved. I'm talking about the incidents a bit later. If you are really lucky, you will see your company's logo flashing in the evening news or in the website saying that there was a major data breach. And by the way, these people are using this technology. And then the question, do you need this kind of a formal data protection officer? Uh, early on in this task force, we actually invited um, then uh, the kind of a director or our data protection authority, Reo Arnio, he's now retired, but still very much active. And I said, do game companies need one? Because it's a bit blurred. They didn't want to make a direct line that you have a certain amount of revenue, a certain amount of people, because it doesn't make sense. You may have a huge factory with 20,000 workers. They do like, uh, let's say, buckets. So they really, I mean, the personal data is minimal. But you may have like a free guys somewhere in the garage making the game that is global. 
mobile and you may have tens of thousands of users. So it was tied to something else. And he was there saying that, hmm, strictly speaking, if you have a game that just have a, like a guest account and you know the third party is limited, maybe you don't. But then he was looking at the audience, I warmly recommend you have one. Because authorities like and people like that even if it doesn't like have a formal DPO things on their shoulder, that you do have a defined contact person. And then something that would be worth a week seminar is what you do with kids, uh, age gate or not, in which area. And good news, this is totally fragmented. It's even fragmented in EU. I was like so mad. That was the only thing I wanted, one, one age limit. USA has 13. And I said, give me that. Oh, I don't care if it's 75. Give me one age limit for Europe. And now it's blown in the smithereens um, because we have like 13, 14, 15, and 16. But if you don't remember anything else about children in Europe, uh, not in the USA, I have heard a lot of people say, oh, if you have kids, then we need a consent. We need a permission from parents. No, you don't. Not as a rule, but if your legal basis for the whole service is that you don't let people in before they have consented on your like outrageous use of their personal data because it doesn't fall into a category of just providing your game, then a child cannot give that consent. If you need a consent, then you need to go to the parents. Good luck finding out who they are. Are they divorced? Are they married? Do they have a custody where they adopted? How the beep am I going to find that out? Because it's a black mass for me behind that screen. I'm not going to read this through. This is for all of you. This is my world's shortest checklist for game companies, what they need to do. If you, on the done, if you have yes, 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 you are in a much better shape than what a lot of traditional companies. So I'm not going to go through it. But uh, this is kind of an eternal life cycle because things keep changing. If, even if you are like super happy that everything is done, you can maybe uh, breathe in peace for 15 seconds because something will be changed. There will be a new supplier, a new hosting partner, you will go to a new region, you will have a new game, you will have new functionalities, or you have taken away something. So you need to keep this up to date because basically you need to understand what you are doing. Like that you need to in understand the architecture of the house that you are living in and be able to explain it to whomever asks. Few words about the international data transfer, what is really kind of now the uh, hot topic, because the USA is kind of behaving badly. Uh, and not just USA, we see walls coming up. The world was kind of going to be really open and harmonized, and now we can see this pro protectionism coming in place. If you have a game in China, all the Chinese data needs to stay in China. Same goes with the Russia, uh, and now the USA is kind of a bit suspicious destination. So why am I showing you this? This is a fish truck in the northern Norway. If we want to uh, transport this fantastic Norwegian seafood, let's say to the restaurant in Spain, we need to ensure that the all way the temperature stays in about maximum plus one or two. It doesn't help us if the temperature was close to zero almost all of the way, but somewhere in the southern Germany, we lost the power and the temperature rose to 20. That is gone. And the same thing is for the data protection. It's the weakest link theory. You keep it like in protected, and then you go into the territory where the temperature rises and you lose it. This is why you need to ensure that the entire chain of operation stays close to zero. Few words about what happens if the worst happens. If you, for some reason, are so lucky that you will be under that magnifying glass. And there could be several reasons for that, because nowadays it's super easy. By the way, if you all are annoyed, you go to the website and you don't understand what they are doing, and you feel like starting a little fight, you don't need to invest much time and money. You go to any authority website, like here in Finland, they have a form. They will walk through you. You need to fill in this, what is that, and then you push enter and go uh, do something else and just wait for the results. You don't need to invest anything. And by the way, we Finland, we love to complain. 
We are complaining people. We are at the top of the list with Germany. Uh, it may be that we have this tradition that when we are nasty, or so we, we are like annoyed. We don't tell in the restaurant that the food is bad. We go home and we complain. And so our Finnish authorities super burned with these complaints because they have obligation to investigate every single one that is coming. They can't kind of think that's rubbish. They need to go and follow through it. So if any of your gamers is an activist, and I can see there's a little trend, speaking about trend, parents are getting more uh, aware because they are much younger than me and my friend. They have been playing the games themselves. They have a bit more technology understanding than my friends who are totally clueless. So there may be anybody putting that in. There may be that there's a news article. Authorities also, if there's something in the news, they follow that up. So it could be anything that starts this little bushfire. Um, what they can do, first they will send you a letter. What are you doing? Please explain your processing operation. What is your legal place? Where do you have your audience? Do you have any kind of a documentation how you're doing? It's a bit like bookkeeping. If the tax inspector walks in, you need to be able to explain where the money comes in and where it goes out. Then they have a police powers. If they are really unhappy with your reply, so think this is really something scandalous, they will barge in 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's a famous EU dawn raid, meaning that nobody else is in the office except somebody just opening the doors. They have the power to take your hard drives, your notebooks, whatever. Sorry, interrupted your business. We will investigate this. Hasn't happened that often, but yes, it has happened because companies don't like to boast it. They don't put in LinkedIn, it. yay, we had a raid this morning. You are like really ashamed that you're going to, mm, oh, we have a little disturbance here. Uh, we will be back to business. Um, and the worst thing, they will interview people. Marketing, think about that. When they say, yeah, I was running that campaign and I had these fantastic targeted audiences and I could combine this data from everywhere. Not a good reply. And the consequences, of course, that they just chat, chat, fix this. What is, by the way, their first priority? They do not want to find people. They want that things would work. But if you get to the fines, we have a quite hefty amounts. Four percent, this is maximum of your global turnover. So it means that you may have a little subsidiary here in Europe, but your global operation, they, it's all taken into account. So you can't have tactics how you place your subsidiaries or companies you're working in. Or 20 million euros, whichever is higher. Um, of course, the big players say, I still have 96. Thank you. I will pay that as a coffee money. But then if you forget to report the breach, that's an additional fine. It's not alternative. If you're really lucky, you end up in six. But the fines and investigation take years. What is much more frightening, and I'm not going to frighten you a bit, not that you are likely target, but just uh, reminding that your very crucial partner may be down for this reason. Because if authorities are there, that they just don't care. They are arrogant as and I'm not going to swear here. So they decided, OK, let's take that side down, because now your operation will stop. This has also happened a few times that we've been really close. And this is another thing that organizations don't want to boast about. I happen to know personally a bank. Not going to say where, it was a rather large bank. And I was talking with the data protection authorities, technical uh, like uh, advisor. And he was telling me that they noticed something really nasty happening. So they sent a letter, fix that at once. Nothing happens, la, 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 nothing. So they sent another letter. Then they said that if you don't fix this by next week, we will take your site down. Da, 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 nothing. So they're sending there today, uh, two hours, now. Then they call to the domain control and say, take that site down. And they said, what are you saying? Do you understand that all the transactions of these banks are tied to this dot com site. If we take that down, all the transactions, public and private, was it? Yes, we know. We've been sending the five warning letters. We are authority. We are right. He said, "Give me an hour." Uh, seven minutes later, the CEO of the bank called. How can I help you? Because he could see himself in the evening news when the bank site has crashed, and they knew. So they didn't even have a pretext. We don't know what's happening. They got all these letters. They did nothing. It was fixed in next hour. So, and of course, they are not telling this in public. But this is something that I predict that within the next two years, we may see one big service going down.
because they haven't really cared. And why is it a headache for small game companies if you are crucially dependent on that service? Do you have a plan B if you lose your hosting service provider or somebody? Is your business tied? Do you have a plan B? I'm going out of time. So just saying that security, what is being specifically in Finland, shame, shame, shame on us on Vastaamo. So please pay attention. That was, a, if you really want to see something that wasn't taken care of, and think about mental health stories of people there online. So sometimes keep a fire drill, even though you sit in the room and imagine that if we would get now a notification that our data is leaking or this system, what would we do? Who would we call? And by the way, it's always Friday afternoon and then you have 72 hours. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. I'm not going to the, the kids, but do remember that you need to do your homework because the age limits and requirements vary greatly, but it can be done. There are game companies who have survived it. Some have maybe then actually uh, really isolated their regions. I'm not going to say that's an uh, alternative to you. So of course you have language requirements. I'm not going in there. You may have countries where you do not approach their precious customer in any other language. Uh, of course, you can pretend that you are kind of hovering in the outer space in English, but once when you hit the ground, what I'm saying, if you start, for example, advertising in any mediums that is local, then the consumer authorities get uh, uh, curious. Uh, loot box is not going in there, extremely fragmented. And remember that the content as such is also something that's regulated. There's no one content that is culturally appropriate globally. We were once thinking, is there anything that if you show like a pond in the sunshine, uh, just water, but somebody said, mm, the sun has certain implication in some cultures. Okay, let's have a drop of rainwater. Uh, is that, uh, so it's super difficult to say that there's something that nobody would get irritated about. And, um, Authority request, if you are really lucky, so you have a local police say that give me access to the data because we're investigating crime, it may or may not be okay. So going really uh, through the final stretch, how do you do this thing? First of all, get help. This is a little advertising. Remember, our, we lawyers, we are warm and fuzzy people, happy to help you. And it's something that it's good to do now before you are out. Because time is money. Once when you're designing your game, it's super important for you to understand that A and B don't even dream about it. Always we will get into trouble. C and D are fine. And E, Maybe we need to think about it. Not that you have a, a, about to launch your game and the champagne is on ice and then the lawyer walks in and says, that's illegal. So no, it's not, there's no added value because you are not going to do anything anyway. Everybody will just be pissed. Uh, so what you can do is that you may have a global vanilla approach that is kind of uh, basics and then only make the changes in the regions that are necessary. Then, of course, you may have uh, versions really for different markets, what kind of takes money and resources to administrate that. Haven't really seen unless you have a super huge game. And then to see it, let's take the strictest approach and hope that it works. But that means that then you need to compromise in some features. Here's a short list for survival tips. Uh, understand what you are doing. Draw a picture with the stakeholders. And my favorite question is why? Why are we doing this? Is there simple? Because we need to have this customer. Thank you. Let's move on. But if there's no good reply for the question why, then I start nagging like an old terrier. That why are we then doing it? Should we then just forget it? Do we have alternatives? Speak with the coders. Because they are the ones sometimes that they open or close the interface and it may have drastic consequences for the data loss. And nobody has told them. They are really super intelligent people, but they have a billion other things in their mind. So ask them, why are you doing this? Why are we plugging this in? Do not forget employees. Sometimes companies are so focused on their co consumers or customers, clients, end users. Fantastic. But you have people working for you and you're probably collecting quite a lot of data from them. You may know that they are sick or who their partner is and whether they have kids and whatever. So take care of that as well. And one thing that if I need to say one thing, have a really good privacy notice and FAQ because that will keep some of the activists away. If they see a company that has nothing 
easy target to complain. But if they can see you have at least tried to explain, maybe they ask you first, or they go to that next one game company that has nothing, no information on their website, and get help. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lena. Fantastic. <laughs> There was a comment in chat that, just please stay for a yep. couple of questions. Uh, there was a comment on chat that it's very overwhelming when you think about the data protection. <coughs> but I, I, I think it's even more overwhelming now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe one thing to remember that you are using somebody else's property. Mm. Because I can see that's what I was talking about attitude, that if I think that, oh, it's mine, and that's very often with the USA companies, and I can't blame them because that's really their law, that you can agree on that. Mm -hmm. And very often in the agreements, you can see the ownership of data. And we always have this discussion that, oh, which company owns the data? And I always say, I do, not you, not you, not you, it's mine. Mm -hmm. You have a limited permission to use it. And I can tell you that that's the end of now. Of course, this is a bit drastic because there may be some reason you need to have some information that somebody was your customer. Because if they come later and say that, oh, you were publishing this and that, and you threw me out from this game, and I was behaving, I didn't do anything, and your user uh, policy sucks. So then you need to have some information that, did you ever play our game? So not saying that everything needs to be going, but you need to understand that it's really somebody else's stuff that is in your yeah. house. If there's a one question we can take from the audience, but I just have one. As an educator and a game scholar, I'm just kind of thinking about this. There's so many things to know even before asking mm -hmm. from a lawyer. So who do we need to educate with the understanding of, of all the kind of regulations? Uh, that has been asked me a lot, and I would say that, of course, everybody, because let's put it the other way around. Is there somebody in your company that doesn't need to understand anything? And somebody wants to say, oh, the cleaning people, oh, they are crucial people, because they may throw some, like, for example, employee sickness story into a regular bin. I'm not saying that your cleaning person is a PhD in data protection, but that, that they ask, that, is it okay? Where should, I, should this be shredded, or is it okay to... Uh, throw it in the regular bin. Not that you uh, know what to do, but you know that hmm, maybe I should ask. Because if you put me coding in your game, that's not the pretty side. So uh, I need to understand something, but no way I can do that. Or I can, but it would be a waste of uh, time and money. So just have a rudimentary understanding that this is something you are liable. Because when you are designing, like I already said, you make very drastic long-term decisions if you decide to hang around with some people that just don't care versus people who are there to help you. Hmm. Any questions from the audience? Well, at least for me, I think that we've been so excited about the global market, especially in Finland. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but it starts to now with all these kind of regulations in practice, starts to sound so much more work than what it used to be. Yeah, but I would say there's a lot of work first. But once when you've done it, then it's kind of business as usual. Like I said, like a finance department. Once when you start thinking, oh my gosh, I need to do a tax declaration, it feels overwhelming. But once when you have that, okay, this was money coming in, that went out, that those were people, all of a sudden, yep, you have it. And then mm -hmm. you just keep repeating it yearly. And you need to see that what's different from the yeah. last year instead of starting. But it's a bit like spring cleaning your garage, you know, where you were throwing everything in and you don't know what's in there. And now, now somebody comes to say that, can you make a full inventory? And you go, I don't want to even see those cardboard boxes, but gotta be done. But like yeah. I said, get professional cleaners. They will do it for you. And there's, by the way, even Finnish tools that will help you. Do not rely just on paper and pen and Excel. You need to have documentation that you store somewhere. Yeah. Thanks. I guess it's good to leave here. So thank you, Lena, a lot uh, from your opening up of the, mm. especially the image of sure. how things work. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. We're going to go for a break and we'll be back at quarter to one finish time. So please stay in the, in the stream uh, or just do whatever you need to do for your lunch break. And we'll be back soon. <laughs>